Hello everyone and welcome to a new lecture in the topic of STEMI in the ACG course and today we are speaking about an interesting lecture regarding the missed lead or the forgotten lead, the AVR lead. Today we are going to learn what is the clinical significance of the ST elevation in AVR and the clinical significance of the ST depression in AVR as regard myocardial ischemia. Of course we remember this diagram, this is the heart and we have the six limb leads. Looking at the heart in a frontal view, we have one, two, three, and we have AVL, AVF, and AVR. We have also the six precordial leads, which are looking to the heart in like a top view, or like a coronal view. And then we have the AVR, which is the only lead in the right upper quadrant with an angle of minus 150 degrees. Of course, we know that the electrical activity of most of the heart is directed towards the positive poles of most of the other leads, like AVL, 1, 2, AVF, and lead 3, whereas AVR is away from the electrical activity, and that's why AVR is mostly negative in most of the ACGs. And so, of course, we remember the Chamberlain rule number 5, in which all waves are negative in lead AVR, as it represents the electrical activity as seen from the right shoulder of the patient. So in AVR, you would see the P wave is negative, the complex of negative, and of course, consequently, T wave would be negative and inverted. So we can conclude that AVR is electrically opposite to the left-sided leads, lead 1, AVL, lead 2, and the precordial leads from V3 to V6. And so, based on this, we can conclude also that ST depression in these leads can produce reciprocal ST elevation in AVR. As we remember from the lecture of ACG in STEMI, all ST elevation can cause reciprocal ST depression and vice versa. And so, based on this, what can cause ST elevation in AVR? Left main coronary artery stenosis may cause this. Proximal or near osteal LED occlusion can cause ST elevation in AVR severe multivessel coronary artery disease, and in case of diffuse subendocardial ischemia, like in case of oxygen supply demand mismatch, which can cause type 2 myocardial infarction, can result in ST elevation AVR. Because most of these presentations can cause ST depression in the left-sided leads, as the limb leads or the precordial leads that we mentioned before, and so causing reciprocal ST elevation in AVR. And so, this ST elevation is considered like a reciprocal one, rather than a direct one. And so, we need to remember that ST elevation AVR is usually a part of left main equivalent pattern in ACG. And what do we mean by left main equivalent? We mean that a STEMI patient with a culprit vessel, either the left main stenosis or occlusion, although of course rarely to so saw left main coronary artery occlusion, because in this case the patient would die before he presents to the ER, and usually it is just stenosis, or combined significant LED and LCX stenosis or occlusion, and its features are presence of ST depression of more than or equal 1 mm in 8 or more ACG leads like inforolateral ST depression and ST elevation AVR and or V1 more than 1 mm because it may present by ST elevation in only AVR plus minus V1. And in some literature, only 6 ECG leads showing ST depression is enough to diagnose left main equivalent as we mentioned in the lectures of left main equivalent. So we can stick to the number of six or some number of eight, but presence of ST elevation AVR with the ST depression in the inferolateral leads is very suggestive of left main equivalence. So what are the possibilities in this case? Culprit is a left main coronary artery, multivessel coronary artery disease, the culprit is both LED and LCX occlusion, or proximal or LCX occlusion with an occlusion of the other major left coronary artery that is filled by collaterals from the patent LED or LCX vessel. Let's look at this ECG. We can see here that there is ST elevation in AVR and in V1 as well, and we have ST depression in most of the inferolateral lead, lead 1, 2, 3, AVF, and also from V3 to V6. So this is a chest left main equivalent. Another one, we have an ST elevation in V1 and AVR, and ST depression also in the inferolateral lead, so also suggestive of left main equivalent pattern in ECG. And although in some patients it may be a chronic ECG finding, as we mentioned before, some patients may have multivessel coronary artery disease plus minus left main vessel infection. But of course, if you see a patient presenting with chest pain and he has left main equivalent ECG, he should be scheduled for primary PCI in order to see whether there is a culprit vessel occlusion at the time being that need to be urgently revascularized, not just early invasive strategy. 
Also, in the ACGs, there is an important feature, which is which is higher, the ST elevation EVR or V1. In this SG, for example, we have ST elevation higher on EVR than in V1. So it suggests that the culprit vessel here is mostly left main coronal artery stenosis. Whereas here, the ST elevation in EVR is less or nearly equal to ST elevation in V1. So we can expect that the culprit may be proximal or osteal LD occlusion. So the magnitude in Differ or the difference between the magnitude of ST elevation V1 EVR may help in predicting which is the culprit. So we now know that ST elevation is usually reciprocal elevation EVR in response to the ST depression in the inferolateral lead. But can ST elevation occur directly in AVR rather than reciprocal? Yes, of course. In case of infarction of the basal septum, which receives septal branches from proximal LED and sometimes from the conal branch of RCA, in this case, if there is infarction in this anatomical region which is directly phased by the AVR lead, it can lead to direct ST elevation in AVR. So in patients with anterior STEMI, for example, if the LED is occluded proximal to the first septal perforator and he has a rudimentary coronal branch not assisting in blood supply of the basal septum, so in this ECG, for example, we can see ST elevation from V1 to V4 as well as ST elevation AVR also. And so, this patient has ST elevation AVR together with the anterior STEMI, which indicates LED occlusion proximal to the first septal perforator leading to infarction of the basal septum, especially that if this patient has rudimentary coronal branch, so the occlusion of LD very proximal can lead to ST elevation in the AVR due to infarction of the basal septum. And so, ST elevation AVR can be part of left main equivalent, as we know the reciprocal ST elevation in left main, or part of the anterior STEMI due to occlusion proximal to the first septal perforator. And so remember that the higher the ST elevation AVR, the larger the extent of myocardial ischemia and the worse the prognosis, whether the ST elevation AVR is part of left main equivalent or part of anterior STEMI. And the absence of ST elevation AVR almost excludes significant left main coronary artery lesion in most of the cases. So AVR is a clinically prognostic lead and should not be a forgotten lead in the ECG. Now another question, does ST elevation occur directly in AVR in case of stress ECG, for example, a patient is having treadmill test and then with acceleration of the AVR, does it occur to have ST elevation AVR like the other ST changes in the other leads? Let's see this ECG example here. We can see that the patient here has ST depression in the inferolateral leads and also we have ST elevation in AVR. And so this patient with the treadmill and with the acceleration of the heart rate with exercise, he developed ST elevation AVR, which is of course predicting left main coronary artery or osteal LED disease. And true, it should be regarded as a high risk sign is a treadmill test. And so this patient need to be scheduled for invasive coronary and geography rather than medical treatment. So of course, if AVR, AVR ST elevation can occur in stress ACG as well. Now we finished the first half of the lecture regarding the ST elevation the AVR and now we speak about ST depression. What causes ST depression AVR? Of course, the most famous the knuckle sign in acute pericarditis in which the AVR shows ST depression and PR segment elevation as opposite to the other lead which show ST elevation and PR segment depression and we know that we compare this with the TP segment. And of course, in the early repolarization pattern, we learned before that ST depression may occur in AVR as opposite to the ST elevation in the other leads. So in pericarditis, for example, as we can see here, we have ST elevation, which is diffuse ST elevation in most of the leads, and there is ST depression in AVR, and there is reciprocal changes in PR segment in H leads. And early repolarization pattern also, as we can see here, we have widespread concave ST elevation, which is most prominent in V2 to V5, together with ST depression in AVR as well. Now let's come to a tricky question, which I was asking myself when I was a resident. Can ST depression occur in AVR in the context of myocardial ischemia? When I was a resident, my answer was no. It usually occurs in acute pericarditis or early repolarization. But let's look at this ACG example here. We can see ST elevation in V1 to V4 together with 1 and AVL and we have ST depression in AVR. Of course, this is not pericarditis, the ST elevation here is huge. And so, 
it's never to be acute pericarditis with this severe C-segment elevation. It is anterolateral STEMI and showing ST depression. Also in this ECG, we see a massive C elevation in V1 to V6 and 1 EVL, having the thumb stone appearance that we have spoken about before, together with ST depression in AVR. So here we have extensive anterior STEMI with a high extent of myocardial infarction, and the patient has AVR ST segment depression. Also in this ECG, we have ST elevation in the inferior leads, ST elevation V6. We have ST depression in V2, V3 with prominent R wave, suggestive of posterior infarction, and we have ST depression in NVR. So this patient has infraposterolateral STEMI showing ST segment depression. So what's this? Of course, reciprocal ST depression EVR may occur in patients with anterior STEMI, indicating a large extent of infarction. It didn't show here ST elevation because the occlusion, of course, didn't affect the basal septum, which we have seen before. But here, it was as a response or as a reciprocal depression AVR in response to a large extent of infarction. So as ST elevation AVR may occur as a reciprocal elevation in response to ST depression infralateral leads, it can occur as well as a reciprocal depression in response to ST elevations and anterior leads. Also in AVR patient or inferior STEMI patient, ST depression may occur in AVR, predicting that the culprit vessel is the dominant LCX or dominant RCA infarction with a large posterolateral branch indicating a large size of infarction. And so, ST depression in AVR can occur in inferior STEMI and also in inferior STEMI indicating larger extent of infarction. So it is not, it is wrong to say that ST depression doesn't occur in ischemic patients. So remember, ST depression AVR doesn't exclude myocardial ischemia as it can occur in acute pericarditis, can occur in early repolarization pattern, and can occur in STEMI as reciprocal ST depression indicating a higher extent of MI. And the deeper the ST depression in AVR, the larger the extent of MI and the worse the prognosis. And so AVR is clinically prognostic lead again regarding ST depression as we mentioned also in the ST elevation. So the higher the ST elevation, the deeper the ST depression, the larger the extent of infarction. So our conclusion here is that both ST elevation AVR and also ST depression are considered as independent predictors of in-hostile adverse events in patients with myocardial infarction. And so it is very important to look at the ST segment in AVR in any patient presenting with chest pain as it can give you a clue towards diagnosis. So at the end of this lecture, we understood today the clinical significance of ST elevation AVR and also of ST depression. And our take home message today is that AVR should never be regarded as an insignificant lead or a missed lead as it is usually mentioned or a forgotten lead in the assessment of myocardial ischemia is very important. ST elevation AVR can be part of leptomene equivalent or even anterior STEMI and ST depression AVR it may occur in STEMI as the same in pericarditis and early repolarization pattern. Thank you very much for your watching.